Hi folks, it's good to be with you and love to everybody out there. My website's jasonburnspreacher.com I'm going to be doing a video exposing and, and critiquing, intellectual critique of Paul Williams, a Muslim apologist. So we're going to listen to about six clips of his and give a, an intellectual creek, uh, critique of his, his work, of what he's saying. Okay, so I'm going to put the video here. It's on... Uh, the source of these videos so that they get um, uh, the credit for the videos is Dawa Digital Dawa Digital but we're going to go through um, his his videos and we're just going to I'm just going to offer uh, an intellectual critique uh, so it's Dawa Digital uh, so go onto their website subscribe um, and find the original videos um, but that's where we're at, okay? Before we start, and my website's jasonburnspreacher.com. You can get me on Twitter, you can get me on Facebook. Um, so I hope that's um, a help to you. Some of the websites that I go to are Legionnaire Ministries, Desiring God Ministries, uh, Grace to You, Sermon Index, Sermon Audio, um, Southern Seminary, Westminster Seminary. Reform Theological Seminary, those are sites that uh, I go to and use their material. Apologetic Press, um, uh, Phil Fernandez is a good apologist. Um, so those are some of the sources that I use. So without further ado, we're going to read the Bible and pray. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of Him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey His commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith, who is that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. So I'm going to pray. Father, I just come before you today and I confess my sin and confess my failure and the weakness of my heart. And I just pray, Lord, as we look at these videos and as we think about them, I just pray that you give us wisdom, help us to study your word, help us to know you in a deeper way. And I pray, Lord, that these videos would be a help, and that this video would be a help, Lord, to people. And that it would bring them to salvation, and to a knowledge of you. So I pray that you are bless, Lord, in your name, and for your glory. Amen. Amen. So without further ado, let's listen to his video. Yeah, so, um, happy days. Um, happy days indeed because uh, I, I've heard it on the grapevine with an impeccable isnad and an excellent matin that Jay Smith, the hate preacher extraordinaire, the missionary who is paid to harangue uh, Muslims in London is going back where he belongs. And I don't mean hell, I mean the United States. He's going back to the United States because he is actually an American. He's a foreign missionary who's been... See, um, he has been seeding discord uh, and, and community incohesion in this country for too long. And I'm surprised he's got away with it. I'm surprised the police haven't been involved. The Home Secretary hasn't decided to kick him out. But anyway, I say goodbye to Jay Smith. Uh, and uh, no, I'm not going to say anymore than that. Uh, I think uh, he may be turning up one last time to Speaker's Corner. And uh, I'm sure the Muslims there will be very happy to see him again and wish him a fond farewell as he disappears back to his own country. Because as an Englishman, I say good riddance to foreign missionaries who come to my country and cause fitna and discord and hatred amongst the British population. And so that's my message to him, and I hope one day he sees the light, the truth. We do pray that Allah will reveal the truth to him about Isa, Jesus, that he should stop worshipping Isa. Uh, Jesus himself, the Bible says, worship God. And yet here we have Jay Smith worshipping the man who worshipped God. And this in Judaism, this in Islam, is blasphemy. And we pray that we'll all be delivered from blasphemy and turn to the one true and living God. And to those who remain, people at Lizzie and at, uh, at, at Hatun, 
always oh, H Hayton, no Hatton, always mispronounce her name. I think she's from Turkey. Who remain? Uh, they are relatively minor figures compared to the Jay Smith, uh, Jay Smith of this world. Uh, they never listen to anything that we say. They never listen to what we say about the Bible or about Jesus or about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. All they do is they continue in a much smaller way the hate ministry, the hate ministry of J. Smith. And uh, we would. So, what I have to say to that is, you know, I, I just think that's disgraceful, absolutely disgraceful and disgusting what Paul Williams is saying there. Basically, he's. Basically, as far as I'm concerned, uh, this demonising uh, Jay Smith and demonising um, Lizzie and others, and I don't think that's a scholarly way. I think uh, you should deal with the intellectual questions that Jay Smith and uh, Lizzie and others have, who've been following Jay Smith and listening to Jay Smith and influenced by him, deal with their arguments. Um, you know, throwing mud slinging mud like that I just I don't think it's uh, scholarly properly really and uh, we'll, we'll get further into uh, Paul's uh, apologetics so you know I disagree with that totally um, J Smith had a particular agenda and that was to critique Islam as Speaker's Corner and uh, he had a right to do that so next video They hear a preacher week after week tell them a beautiful story. And it is a lovely story. It's about how God, who loves them really, 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 really an awful lot, came to earth and died for them. And God died, and because God died for their sins, now it's a beautiful story on one level, a level of mythology, on the level of religious ideology. It's a lovely, lovely story. Islam is different. When you hear Muslims speak about Islam, about God, about Tawheed, as you've done very well, it's rational, it's clear, there's no ambiguity about it. You, you, know, you gave your reasons why God is not a man, why God doesn't get time, why God, you, you, you quoted from uh, Sir al Ikhlas, you know, this wonderful thing, God is one, uh, is self sufficient, he, is, he does not beget nor is he forgotten, begotten, and there is none like unto him. And this is very clear. But when you ask a Christian who has this emotional belief in this story, and they all have, they're all the same all the same apart from some intellectuals they're all the same it will be ah oh, well you know isn't it lovely that god died for me how can you start asking muslim questions like how can god die logical questions god can't die your own bible says in one john chapter two god uh, sorry god does not die sorry one timothy i beg your pardon chapter one god is immortal he does not die your own bible says that and yet you believe that god died so Basically, what he's trying to do there is trying to make a comparison between Islam and Christianity and say, look, Islam is rational, but Christianity is emotional. The Christianity has this emotional story of Jesus dying, and it's just emotional, and the Islamic understanding of God is more rational. Um, and, and it's just intellectual vacuousness, what he's saying, that... He's saying it's kind of mythology. And the, we're going to get into this more and more, but in the Christian faith has more historical uh, grounding than the Quran concerning who Jesus is. We have the historical record of Thallus in 52 AD, the historical record of Pliny the Younger, 61 to 113 AD, the historical record of Suetonius, 69 to 140 AD, the historical record of Tacitus, 56 to 120 AD, the historical record of Marbar Serapion, 70 AD, the historical record of Phalagon, 80 to 140 AD, the historical record of Lucian Samosa, 115 to 200 AD, and the historical record of Celsus. These are sources that are not Christian and are against Christianity, mention about the historical Jesus. Then you have the Jewish sources, the historical record of Josephus, 37 to 1, 1 or 
AD, historical record of the Jewish Talmud 400 to 700 AD, and the historical record of the Teladot uh, Yeshua 1000 AD. Now these are Jewish sources that mention about Jesus. And, and that's the important thing to remember about the Christian faith. The Christian faith is rooted in real history. And so our faith is not uh, rooted uh, in emotion. It's rooted in historical fact. Where Islam is not rooted in historical fact. So that's the first point. Uh, I'm going to reiterate that now, the historical fact. Uh, in John chapter 1 verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we loot upon, which we have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. The life was made manifest, and we have seen it, and testified to it, and proclaimed to you the eternal life, which was with the Father, and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you, so that you may have fellowship with us, and indeed our fellowship is with the Father, and with the Son, Jesus Christ. So there is eyewitness testimony about Jesus. And our faith is based on historical fact. It's based on eyewitness testimony that Jesus Christ died and rose again. Now, the question... So, the Christian faith is rooted in historical fact. Now, the Quran, when you read the Quran, when you look at the Quran, I have uh, here all the references in my, in my study work here. If I can find it. Oops. Just not that. But I have all the uh, verses. If I can find it. I have in my file um, all the verses concerning uh, Jesus in the Quran. And we'll just we'll just look at a couple of them. In uh, Surah three forty eight, and he will teach him the art of writing and reading and wisdom and the Torah and the ev Evangel. Surah three fifty, and I come confirming that which is before me, namely the Torah, and that I declare lawful you some of the things that have been forbidden to you. And and I could read many many verses in the Quran about Jesus. And what you'll notice about all those verses is what you will notice is there's no historical core around those verses there's nothing to get your teeth into we, the, the authors the author of the Quran obviously didn't know much about the historical context of Jesus we don't hear about the Pharisees the Sadducees we don't hear about Pontius Pilate so the Quran's not historical it's not a historical it's not reliable information about the historical Jesus and the Bible is and so our faith is not rooted in emotion, it's rooted in historical fact. Secondly, the question about Jesus is God and Jesus die, God dying and all the rest of it is a smoke screen. Uh, Paul says, great is the mystery of godliness that, that, that God was manifest in the flesh. You know, there is something there beyond our intellect. And uh, to try to uh, straw man the argument and say, oh... Uh, that God died is illogical. It, it's straw man in our argument. It, it, it's not actually being faithful to the statement of faith, what we believe. We believe too that God is 100% man, 100% God, and became two in one. But it's a mystery how when Christ died, how, how, how that works, how we fully understand that is beyond our intellect. And what he's doing is he's straw man in our argument. And our, 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 our faith is based on a rational faith is based on reason it's based on evidence it's not based on emotion but there is emotion involved emotion in worshiping and loving Christ and loving uh, loving Almighty God with all our hearts but it's not just emotion it's based on reason and evidence and so they get caught up in, in these uh, bizarre intellectual gymnastics to try and explain rationally what is irrational it contrasts that with the clarity and the beauty of Islam. One God, very, very, the message is very clear, very simple. And that is why Islam is the far... It, it's not, it, Islam, the, the idea, he's given a false impression there. The idea that, that uh, God is one sounds like very philosophical, astute. 
it sounds as if um, you know it, it, it sounds very very I'm gonna do a, a series of videos here I'm gonna stop it after this video and we're gonna start again and we're gonna do a series because I think it's worthy of of a series this but <laughs> the idea that God is one is not beautiful and simple as he's making out to be it's very philosophically difficult to actually argue because all of reality, philosophers have noticed, is one and the many. This has been a debate throughout the history of philosophy for, th for thousands of years. So reality is one and many. You can look at any part of reality and it's one, but there are many parts to reality. So even God within his very nature, if you say God is one, there are still parts within God. You're saying that God is love, God is holy. Those are parts within the nature of the one God. So you can never get away of not just having the simplicity of God. We believe in the simplicity of God. We believe that God is one, but we're saying that there are three parts within the Godhead. And you can't get away from that as a Muslim or any philosopher because there are parts within God. God is holy, God is love, God is just, God is wise. These are parts within the Godhead. So it's not philosophically as simple as Paul Williams is making out to be is straw man in Christianity, is hiding uh, facts of philosophical discussion and theological discussion that are more complex than he would want you to know as a Muslim and as a Christian. ...fastest growing religion on the planet, because people, it, it meets the heart's needs, they understand it with their minds, it meets their spiritual needs, it doesn't require them to believe in a fantastic uh, mythology which are well we've shown that Christianity is not mythology and we've shown that the Quran is very clearly mythological because there's nothing historically rooted within the Quran and we've shown that the Bible is just full of historical information in terms of verifying it by sources outside the Bible uh, I've just given you a list of, of, of historians and uh, writers that comment upon Jesus which verifies the the biblical text so there's no mythology there the mythology is in the Quran um, the, the Islam is the fastest growing religion well you know in uh, the Middle East there were millions of Christians in the Middle East they've been butchered and slaughtered by ISIS now the issue there is Islam is is bound to grow fast in the Middle East, for example, and expand in the Middle East if Christians are being butchered. In Egypt um, and in Pakistan and in Muslim uh, countries or countries that are dominated by Islam, you know, it's not easy for Muslims to convert to Christianity. The social, economic and political pressure put upon people. So that's number one. Uh, n number one, uh, Christians are being killed and slaughtered uh, in the Middle East. And uh, they're being butchered. Uh, now, I'm not particularly blaming Islam. Uh, I, I do think it has something to do with the Quran personally. But even if I grant you that, even if I grant you it's nothing to do with Islam, the fact of the matter is Christians are being butchered and murdered in the Middle East, millions of them. And Islam is bound to, to prosper more than Christianity if that's going on in the Middle East now that's just one area secondly in Muslim countries or countries dominated by Islam there is social pressure for people uh, who want to convert to Christianity not to do so and you do have apostasy law the apostasy law uh, is about killing people who leave Islam and that is within Islamic doctrine and teaching so it's no good uh, saying Islam's the fastest religion when you've got a gun to people's head. You know, there's deception here, there's dishonesty here, that it's just intellectually vacuous what Paul Williams is saying. And Islam doesn't fit uh, human need because Islam has taken us back to Sharia law, it's taken us back to law where Christ has set us free from law. Christ has set us free from the mosaic uh, moral laws not the Ten Commandments but all the other laws about uh, what clothes to wear, what food to eat Christ has set us free, we're free in Christ so it, it, it doesn't, uh, Islam doesn't meet the spiritual needs 
but enslaves people in in a in a false religion that is nothing to do with God, but all to do with enslaving people in a system that doesn't know freedom. Upon rational inspection, just doesn't make any sense. God died for you. Your own Bible says that God does not die. Again, straw man in the Christian faith. God is God. God cannot die. No Christian says, no theologian says that God can die, for God cannot die. What we're saying is the incarnate Son died, and what we're saying is there is a mystery beyond what we can understand that the God-man shed his blood and died for us. That you say it's illogical that God died is strawmanning our particular belief. You worship a man who worshipped God? The Bible says that Jesus worshipped Jesus. So, about the worship. In Matthew chapter 2, verse 10 and 12, the wise men worshipped Jesus at his birth. In Matthew 8, verse 2, the leper worshipped him at his healing. Uh, in Matthew 9, 18, 9, 19, the synagogue ruler worshipped him. In Matthew 14, 32, the disciples worshipped him in the boat. In Matthew 20, 20, 20, 21, the mother of James and John worshipped him. The blind man worshipped him at his healing. Let's go to uh, John chapter 9, verse 35. John chapter 9, verse 35. Let's go to that. John chapter 9, verse 35. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and having found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and, at, and it is he who is speaking to you. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. He worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I came into the world, that those who do not see me may see, and those who see may become blind. So Jesus accepted worship. If what Paul is saying is true, Jesus should have rebuked people for worshipping him. But he didn't. He accepted worship. Pray. Jesus cried out in despair, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? You worship that over the creator who made Jesus? Is it not right? When he says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That is a quotation. Jesus, when he's dying on the cross, he is quoting Psalm 22. Therefore, acknowledging a prophetic action that is taking place in Jesus' life on that cross. No, indeed. According to their own Bible, that's what Jesus said. Indeed, that's a very good point. No, no, no. I, I, absolutely. I'm just saying their own scriptures claim this. And it's not rational. Um, so, it, uh, so to believe in Christianity, you really have to put aside your mind and there it's almost a, a, a joke in Christianity I was used to be a Christian that when you go into the Christian when you go to church you leave your brain at the door because you have to you have to leave your brain at the door but well, that that's just intellectual dishonesty there from Paul Williams it's not true Christianity does not teach you to leave your brains at the door uh, people who I've been influenced by, Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones. Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones was the greatest preacher in the 20th century, and he taught a generation of students to think. You know, he used the Socratic method. Now, that's Lloyd-Jones. Lloyd-Jones was a great preacher who influenced me, and he influenced thousands of people in the UK and America and around the world. So that's just one great Christian leader who, who taught us to think. So it's just total nonsense. It was said that Dr. Lord Jones could type uh, four Oxford Dons in knots in debate. So to, to, to say that uh, Christianity is anti-intellectual, you know, what about Augustine, Sir Thomas Aquinas? We could go on and on. St. Alson, these were great intellects, great thinkers. So to say that uh, Christianity is anti-intellectual is just a joke. There are elements of evangelicalism that can be, but that's not Christianity in, in, on the whole. Um, and that's the problem. So, <coughs> we're going to go on to the next video, the, uh, so vi uh, video two. So we're going to just keep debunking these videos and just giving you a different perspective and I hope that I helped to you. So thanks for listening. My website is jasonburnspreacher.com 
and if you go to Digital Dawa and you can watch the original videos. Thank you for listening and take care.